3.30? So basically when we talked about what we were going to do, we were going to work with big data. So what we want to do is we pulled that script from Amazon, the pig script, and we took a look at it and how it was going to work and there's some things that we need to do with it, right? So what I did is I ran the job this morning to make sure that it would go off without a hitch. It takes about 16 minutes to run. It spins up three instances on its own. All right, we have 75 instances now in the classroom, so we should be okay. If you run into a hitch, change over to a different instance. If you run into, if there's not enough in T1 micro, go up to smalls. All right, so either way that we can run at least 40 to 75 in here, 150, somewhere in there. But basically the idea is you create a job flow Right? And then what it does is it runs. And once it, what it will do is it will spin up instances all on its own. It will just automatically go do whatever you want it to do based on that script that we went over on Monday. Right? You can also monitor how it worked, how it did, where it failed, how many tasks, ma how many tasks it took. So it has its own monitoring that goes along with it. Right? If you wanted to set it up in its own specific instance group, it will kind of tell you what it did and how it did it and when it ran. When you're doing Elastic MapReduce, it has a master computer and then computers that do work. The master computer, if you're doing a big data, more than just a little testing thing we're doing today, that master computer you're gonna to wanna to leave on all the time, right? Because that's where you're gonna find your data unless you tie it back to your S3 bucket, all right? Those core are the ones that are actually doing the work. So the master is coordinating all the in and out tasks, all the trade-offs between all the computers, and then the cores are the ones that are actually doing the work. And they take work in small data chunks, small little bits at a time. Yes, so sir? each of these has to be a different instance? Each, you'll, you'll spin up three instances today on this, okay. right? And you can just give it kind of a description you want. When it's done, it's gonna output to your folder, right? a folder called pig apache output then a date and then the things that we we're looking for in the script the top 50 refers the top 50 ip addresses and the part it gives you a success that it's completed this successfully or it will tell you it failed if it tells you it failed there's going to be a big chunk of diagnostic data in there right and then it will give you the file itself and you're going to want to tell it to work with notepad And then what it does is it gives you the top 50 IP, IP addresses broken out by the class C string. So this would be 72, 14, 193 was in the top there, right? But it gives you a bunch of other data along the way. It gives you the count, how many times did these show up, right? And it's just the straight IP addresses. If you go back. Those are the IP addresses that it saw, right? Because remember, we're just working with test data. Oh, so this is just the test. This is just the test data. I want to make sure that we get all this down, all right? And then word wrap it. And these are the top refers. These are the people that actually sent us data, all right? And these are all off Amazon logs. It's not anything you've generated or anything else. Yeah. So when you're going to go and you're going to do your map reduce, right? When you do this, create a new job flow. What we're going to do is we're going to run a sample application, if you just want to call it whatever you want to call it. We're going to run the sample application, and then we're going to run our Apache log reports, our pig script. All right? And then go continue. It's going to ask you for your bucket name right here. So you just want to put in your bucket name, the one, the one that you gave it originally. Now, because I've already run this once, I'm going to change the last number on this just so I don't overrun the files. If you want to do any kind of extra arguments, we're not, right? If you want to run an interactive session so you can see where all the little dots go, that's fine, but you're not going to know what to put in there because you don't know what it's looking for. So I'm going to really recommend you just run the first one as, a, as the script. Just take the script in its entirety and let it go do its job, right? Click on Continue. You can tell it what kind of instances to bring up. For right now, let's just work with smalls, right? All you really need are two, all right? You don't need to, you don't want to do spot instances right now or anything else. Just kind of take it as its default. We have no VPCs. Because we just want the output, we don't necessarily need to get into the master computer, 
right? We can do this without a key pair. We can just launch it and let it go because all I'm concerned about is the output. If you want to leave the, if you have a master up and you need to leave it up, then you would want to use your key pair for this, right? But in this instance, we can run this without a key pair because all we want to do is just let the thing run. If you want to keep the job flow alive when you're done, if you want to be able to go back through and take a look at everything, especially if you're doing some of the high-end scientific applications, then you'd say yes to some of these, right? Um, do you really want your job flow visible to every member of IAM regardless of their permissions? Generally, this would be no, right? But in some cases, if you have research assistants, they're going to want to be able to get into this. And then we have no bootstrap options. We don't want to do anything additional. Bootstrap is when it's just starting up and getting ready to go. We don't have anything special. We don't have a special image. We don't have an image that we've created. We don't have any special software we need installed before the instance is launched. But those would be the bootstrap options that I would choose, especially if I had our own company image. And then what it will do is it will tell you everything you've got. Is this really what you want to do? Is this how it looks? And then what you want to do is just go ahead and create the job flow and then it will go do its thing and it will tell you it's starting and again this thing takes about 16 minutes to run through the whole cycle but once you've run through the whole cycle you should have this folder pig apache inside your s3 bucket right now remember your grantee permissions this has to be done in your name right so if you try to do it in my name i might not it may not work so remember when you're doing this into your own bucket that you have the ability to read write drop and all that other stuff in your bucket. So check your permissions before you go in. But that's exactly how you run a big data project is just kind of a sample, here's what we got. Yes, sir? So we're going to run up two instances and then in the master create this or we just create this and then run the instances? What you do is you create this job flow, okay. right? And it will do everything for you. It will start your master, the coordinator, Okay. And it will start all the other boxes it needs it, that it thinks it needs to do its job. That's fantastic. So you're not running instances and then pointing it to those instances? No, nope, it does. You just create the job flow and that's it? Yep. And, uh -huh. and if you go into EC2, what you'll see is that I'm racking up a bunch of instances right now. Because it's running them up in order to get the processes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yep. So you do have that time yep. gap in there. So you'll see that I've got my three uh -huh. pending down here right now. So my so master and my two slaves. We're going to run out of space a little bit real quick. That's why I want everyone to just kind of take this as is today. We okay. should have 75 small instances according to Amazon. We so should have enough to cover this. Okay. Get one up and going. But if you get one up and going and it's not quite, it, it, it will queue, it will queue up. And then, and, and then just be patient. So, yes, patience today is, in a, is a wonderful thing. All right? But this is essentially how you set up a big data project. And then we'll go into wow. how to... Um, how to parse out our own data and use our own Yes. Scripts. Because right now we're just using sample data, sample scripts. Sample data, okay. sample scripts, because I want you guys to get real comfortable doing this first. Right. And we're going for that easy win. Make sure it works, make sure it works first. And then we'll go through all of the data that we've been collecting in our S3 buckets and write the script that will work to parse all that stuff out. And um, the script that we looked over last night that you wanted to be comfortable with, that's the sample script. That's the sample script. All right. So you guys kind of know what your data outputs are. So you know that when you see this, that you're, here are my refers, and here's how the script broke out each one of those chunks, and then wrote a separate file for each one of those. So that was kind of the idea behind all this, right? So again, this is kind of your first big data project, right? You're going to be combing through about four or five gigs of data just to find a few little simple things in it. All right, and that's essentially what big data is, is finding the needle in the haystack. What's that sample data set entail? Like, the data, what are they pulling from? The sample data set is actually Amazon logs. Okay, so it's just Amazon logs. Yep, so oh, it's okay. a bunch of Amazon logs that we don't see, we don't know what's actually in, and they've probably been sanitized so that, you know, it's not giving me... Yeah, you're not going to find any really cool stuff in there, right? Yeah. But the whole idea behind this is learn how, if you know how to comb through and parse logs, then any job you take as a system administrator or as a security engineer, your life just became tons easier if you can do this. Instead of digging through just logs. Instead of just digging through logs using grep, sed, and awk. Grep, grep, sed, and awk are awesome, but you don't always have access to a Linux system. This is the next best thing cool. for slicing bread. And it's so much easier than trying to open up a four gig log in Notepad and try to search for something. Yeah. 
right? We've all done that, and it's painful, and it's ugly. It wasn't designed for it. But again, that's that whole idea of working with large data chunks and combining it down into something that's human readable. Yes, so sir? Can you push, like, let's say, I'm system administrator, we don't have everything up on AWS, but I have my own AWS account. Can I push my sample set? As Wait, long my sample set on my server for my logs. Yes, you. Out, yes. It seems far easier than. Yeah. If you have, if if you um, have your logs on a local server, you can do a loop back from Amazon okay. through their gateway system. But you just have to make sure that your system administrator and your network engineer have set up that VPC gateway from AWS to Corp. Okay, and so that's why it's asking for VPC. Yeah. Yep. If I have data back on my network attached storage, yes, it wants the VPC to do that. So it kind of makes sense? Any questions on this one? What's the big one? What's the big rule today going to be? Patience? Patience. And make sure that your S3 bucket permissions are set so that you can read right to that bucket. Yes, ma'am. If you start an interactive pig session, it will prompt you for a user input every time you turn around. Every time it hits a new chunk in that script, it's going to say, what do you want me to do? Which means you need to know what the regular expression needs to be, you need to know how to carve the data, and all the rest of it. And that's So if you choose interactive, you actually have to supply input. If you choose the script, it will just run based on the script parameters. So I'm going to really recommend that you go with just running the script and a non-interactive session today. Extra arguments you leave blank because you don't have any extra arguments at this time. You will for other projects. Well, I'm. There are people that are getting it started. <laughs> so. The interesting thing mm -hmm. in the output location. All right. So Doug's failed. Why did yours fail? It was Mike's. It was because our. Our bucket names didn't match. Ah, yes, that's bucket names have to match. Well, you, that, yep. That's the thing. I have uppercase letters in my bucket, but yep. it doesn't allow it. All. It has to be all lowercase. Okay. So, so this is going to be one of those really interesting kind of things to do. But yeah, no, so you've got to make sure your bucket's like completely clean. It was going to let you, did you want to start a new bucket or, or as an output bucket? We already started a new bucket. Okay. Yeah, no, it just is, when I switched it to all lowercase, it recognized it. Cool. All right. Now the other thing that you can do too, right, is if you have a failed thing, you can actually go into what's called debug mode, right, and it will tell you exactly why that thing failed. So debug's really kind of handy, especially if it's like two o'clock in the morning and the project has to be done at four. Um, the debug is actually really kind of handy to help you figure out what's been going on with it. So are there any questions about this? Yeah, do you know how to uh, delete that? Will it will. I will do it later on. It will. Okay. It will do it later on. So we're in good stead on that. That is where you put in your bucket name. All you have to do is where it says your bucket brackets, put in your bucket name. All right, any other questions? Are we good? All right, so let's go play with buckets and big data and Hadoop and MapReduce and Pig. We have lots of friends to play with today. Hold on just a second. Let's see what 